Am I audible in the back? Am I audible? The girls in the back, can you hear me? Clearly you can't. Can you come a little bit forward? You can't hear me. Okay, settle in, please. Girls, here. So today we're starting with the endocrine system. In the last class, you studied neurons in the brain system, right? You've already covered those units. So this time we're starting with the endocrine system. Um, what do you already know about the endocrine system? Can someone say? Have you studied about it in the school? This is page number seventy-seven. A 78. Is that a confusion? So the endocrine system, you might have already studied it as part of your biology in school. It's largely a part of our, uh, part of our body that controls our hormonal release, right? We have heard hormones in the context of uh, various reasons like hormones are required for our body to grow, hormones are required for people to feel a lot of emotions, hormone receptors are required for uh, even designing medications around let's say depression, anxiety, they're all hormone based medication, they're altering your hormonal uh, secretion, right? So what exactly is the system which controls these hormones? The system is called as the endocrine system, it's also called as the ductless system. Right, so it's called the ductless system. Why? Because the secretions of endocrine system are the only thing in the body that are not released directly into the bloodstream or into a nervous channel. It's almost like you can imagine it like a sponge. It exists in some part, let's say there's adrenal uh, glands here on top of our kidney. They exist like sponge. They'll secrete organs by, let's say, if you contract a sponge, the water will spread out, right? That's how all the uh, endocrine glands release their secretion. They release it directly. They are not specifically channeling it through one way or the other. Because of which it is also a slow mechanism, right? If I have a tube directly from the brain, for example, if I have to see, my eyes and my brain are connected in, through nerves. That is why the vision is so quick. You're never able to gauge a gap between looking at something and it, aisa kabhi hua that you're looking at something and it, so you saw it's actually inverted in your mind because you didn't have enough time to process it. Doesn't happen, right? We are able to process things very quickly because there's a nervous channel which translates emotion, uh, translates vision with electric impulse, which is a very fast transfer, right? But endocrine system is a slow and also sustained transfer because it is required for longer processes, okay? So one of the most important components required by human body in its day-to-day -day functions is the endocrine system. Um, it is made up of several organs that secrete hormones into the bloodstream, reaching directly the target, uh, target organ. So organs will have receptors for it, right? It will release it in the bloodstream, but which organ responds to it has receptors for it, so they will receive it and uh, they will do the required function. They're important to maintain the internal environment of the body and they're called ductless glands um, because they secrete, uh, their secretions or hormones are directly secreted into the bloodstream. They don't have any channel around them. Muscles have a channel, uh, nerves have a channel, uh, our respiratory system has a channel. They don't have a channel, they directly release it in the bloodstream. So that is why they're also called as the ductless glands. Um, and the specific organs will have receptors. So it's on the organs that the receptors exist, but it is going everywhere in your body. Only the organ will receive it and perform accordingly. Um, I'm just gonna skip to this part about the examples. So some examples are pituitary, thyroid, uh, adrenal, and gonads. Have you heard of these, all of these organs? 
Have you heard all of them in context of psychology? Not so much, right? So hormonal secretion not only just manages how we feel, it also manages how our body is performing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, for example, thyroid manages our metabolism. What is metabolism? The rate at which the cell is doing its basic processes of digestion, respiration, right? So agar, um, let's say I have a lot of sugar and my body is not able to digest it, that it will happen because of lack of insulin, which is again a hormone, right? And that will lead to something like diabetes, right? If someone's internal metabolism is messed up, they might become hyper or hypothyroidic, which means they might lose a lot of weight or gain a lot of weight, and their bodily functions could be severely uh, affected by things like these. So you've seen, I think nowadays people have, uh, having hypothyroidism has become more and more common. You might have heard and seen, of, uh, seen it in, in and around your family maybe, yeah? So all of these functions are more um, physical, but they also have a psychological component uh, here and there. Many endocrine glands are made up of glandular epithelium whose cells manufacture and secrete hormone. There are a few endocrine glands that are made up of neurosecretory tissue which secrete hormones through synapses. So most of them will secrete it through um, the blood channel. Few of them will secrete it through a synaptic nervous channel which is very uh, rare and happens in a few cases. We'll go to each gland and study them. So you'll understand about uh, where in which uh, there is a neurosecretion happening. The example of such a gland is norepinephrine, which is released by the adrenal medulla and is both a neurotransmitter as well as a hormone. So this is doing a multiple role. Um, the endocrine glands are different from exocrine glands, which, have, which are also called as the ductal glands, um, because uh, the example of an exocrine gland would be a sweat gland or a salivary gland. Right, so salivary gland is secreting the saliva specifically through a uh, tubular channel or sweat glands have a tubular channel where they're secreting it outside. Whereas this is not true for, for endocrine glands because their function is very um, longitudinal. Metabolism is not something that you need today, right? It's something you need continuously. Um, so they are doing a very sustained processes because of which their uh, secretions are also slow but also sustained. So hormones, um, essentially what they are secreting for us is hormones. Through their ductless channel, they are secreting hormones for us. Hormones derive from the German word hormone, which means to excite. Right? It is giving some uh, extra support to that organ. So if it is pituitary releasing the growth, it is giving extra support for growth. If it is a uh, thyroid gland, it is giving extra support for release of, a cert, uh, for metabolic activities. If it is uh, testes or ovaries, it is getting extra support for um, secre uh, secretion of, uh, sorry, pr processing of reproductive activities. So they are not responsible for starting or ending any biological process, right? For example, lungs are starting a process of breathing and they're also controlling it. They're not doing any independent process. All the hormonal glands are just supporting another process. They're very important in their support, but they're not taking out a fully independent process. SNA is if pituitary is controlling your growth or thyroid is actually taking care of your metabolism. It is supportive of different parts of uh, or different processes of your body, it is not taking care of it on its own, right? That is why hormones derivation is from the word excite. It is adding a excitation to the all existing process. Um, so I'll just read this part out for you. They do not initiate or stop biological process. They exert their influence on the body by regulating already existing processes, either to slow down or enhance the enzyme mediated actions. They act gradually and activate behavior or physiological response even when the hormones are low in blood. The relationship between hormone and the behavior is interconnected. We can say hormone changes behavior and behavior changes hormonal secretion. Hormones follow a time period in which they are secreted. Some hormones are secreted in a 24 hour period like the adrenal hormones whereas some follow the lunar period which are secreted over a period of 28 days or the menstrual cycle. The hormonal secretion is affected by demands of the internal environment 
or the external situation and effect of one, uh, one of the hormones can bring about change in the other hormones. Um, so as a, as a psychologist or someone who's pursuing psychology, this is a part which is very relevant for all of us, right? Um, when we talk about various hormones and their activity, we will also see that we are able to affect those things by our day-to-day -day behavior. For example, someone is not exposed to sun for a period of two days, their body will create different hormones just because there is melatonin in the skin that gets, when it interacts with sunlight, behaves in a certain way, right? So you will see people who have uh, a lifestyle that is not very healthy for them, they might develop some hormonal conditions, right? In women, something like PCOD can happen, right? In men also, different conditions can happen. So why all of this happens is, it means that our behavior can affect our hormonal secretion. It is a more direct implication than any other part of our body. It's like, can you control your breathing by your behavior? Can you expand your lungs or contract your lungs? Not so much, right? Can you control your stomach or your muscles by your behavior? Not so much. But your hormones are the ones which get the first effect of your, uh, even of your moods. Simply, um, this is done. You guys have passed the attendance? Okay. Just give it to me. Um, our hormones are the first which interact with our behavior very closely. So both behavior can influence the hormone. For example, if you're feeling really anxious for your exam, it will really lead to increased secretion of the adrenaline hormone and maybe decreased secretion of other hormones which are more of metabolic nature because your body is thinking, I'm in a stress situation, I really need to protect myself, right? As vice versa also, if your body is not secreting, let's say, enough serotonin or uh, oxytocin, you might not feel that much happiness. So people who have depression as a clinical condition, not because of triggers in their environment, they might have reduced secretion of certain hormones in their brains or different parts of their bodies because of which they might have gotten conditions like depression or anxiety because they are hormone related effects, right? So sometimes when you are experiencing se a severe distress, the first thing you'll see is the doctors will rule out a biological cause. That it should not happen that your condition is actually caused by lack of certain hormone creation in your brain. So even a thyroid can do that. Uh, this is the third component. So the first part is that behavior will affect the hormone. Right? This part is clear to everyone. Second part is the hormone will affect the behavior. Or so to say this is a two-way street, right? Now the third part is the hormones also affect each other. What that means is, if, for example, your metabolism is not happening properly, you might be more likely to feel a certain uh, impulsive agitation, right? It is simply because the nature of the activities are so interconnected in the body that one hormone secretion can also affect another hormone secretion, right? So if someone is, has um, high, hypothyroidism, they also might be likely to feel depressed, right? Because they, uh, they also might be likely to, I think, face hair loss because of also certain uh, hormones being reduced in the body, right? So one hormone will affect another hormone. Has this, uh, just that, is that concept clear for everyone? Right? I'll just read that out for you. Um, yeah, so the hormonal secretion is affected by the demands of the internal environment as well as the external situation. So the ex internal environment would be another hormone, right? If another hormone in the body is requiring um, a different uh, processing for you or external situation like certain triggers in the environment or certain unhealthy lifestyle habits or something like that. Hormones can be grouped into three main types, the amines, which are molecules, proteins and peptides which are made from chains of amino acids and steroid hormones which are made from cholesterol. Um, I'll just write this down for you. Posters behavior affect uh, the hormones. Yes. And then hormones affect the behavior. Yes. And then hormones affect the hormones. Each other as well. Yeah.
So the biological nature of hormones is it's made of uh, three components. The first are amines. Amino acid is basically a smaller unit of a protein. So you can see protein as a chain of amino acid. A smaller unit of that would be called as an amine, right? So they are, I mean, uh, they are based in that uh, protein. Some of them are based in an amino acid nature, which means they are made of peptides or protein-based molecules. Others may be of steroidal nature, which means they are made of fat-based molecules. So fat is a, a generalized term. We'll call it lipid or cholesterol for the sake of biological conversations, right? Um, so steroid hormone, um, sorry. A steroid hormone is a steroid that acts as a hormone. So they are lipid-based things that also act like a hormone. What it means to act like a hormone is simply to think there is a receptor available for it. See, on top of a, this, on top of a cell, there are different receptors. So whatever can fit in this receptor will also behave, will behave like a hormone. So if this receptor is, I'm just explaining it in a rudimentary way because we don't need to do the research on it. But if this receptor has a fit for this and something else um, fits this structure, then they will also behave like a hormone. So the steroids that behave like hormones um, are also, uh, to put simply, they, they are in sync with the biological receptors of that part of the body. Um, they are secreted, uh, sorry, they're, lipid, uh, they're lipid soluble, uh, which means again, fat soluble. They are secreted by three steroidal glands, the adrenal cortex, testis, and ovaries, right? Which is why you would have often heard of steroids in context of taking it for muscle building, right? Um, it is because uh, they secrete uh, certain hormones which excite the testis, which leads to increase of testosterone, which, which further promotes muscle building. Um, uh, and during pregnancy, even by the placenta. So placenta is a connecting tube between the child and the uh, child and the mother, and it provides a connection for food and nutrition and excretion and air for the child. So um, this also behaves like a, a, a steroid secretion uh, tube at that point in time, but it obviously uh, disappears when the child is uh, conceived. <coughs> Sorry, when the child is delivered. So all steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol. They are transported through the bloodstream of various target or to the various target organs where they carry out the regulation of a wide range of physiological act functions. The receptors are found in the cytoplasm. Um, they pass through the cell membrane. They directly affect the neurons and act um, slowly. So within the cell, I mean, I've drawn the receptor on, on the outside of the cell just for the sake of this. So within the cell, there is the cell uh, membrane, right? On the membrane are usually receptors. So something that is not needed for the body, something that is unhealthy for the body will not enter the cell itself. It has a receptor right outside and the receptor will then instigate a chain of reaction which will lead to physiological functions. Is this clear so far to everyone? Okay. They cannot pass through the cell's plasma membrane because they are water soluble. They bring about changes in cells through the help of a secondary messenger. Hormones and neurotransmitters work differently. The neurotransmitters are sent over a very short distance across the synapse and control only those muscles and glands which are activated by different fibers and their effect is short and rapid. Which means to say, for example, if um, the very fingertip has this, some nerves, this nerve is only controlling this part of the body, right? So the channel exists here is directly to the brain, right? There is no cross connection. This doesn't need to affect some other part of my body. This is not connected to uh, some other organ in my body. It's simply a muscle which will move at the whim of my brain or at the spinal cord if it is an impulse reaction at best, right? So this is a very quick reaction needed. For example, I touch something hot. I don't need to process what actually happened. I need to very quickly move my hand away from it, right? But if I am in a stressful situation, I need to slowly gather different resources and figure out, do I really need to stress about it? What can be done? How do I process it? What is happening? So this response is a little bit of a delayed and slow response, which is okay, which is a good thing, right? I don't want my stress to come and go like this. It will be unhealthy for the body. Whereas for my neural impulses, for my muscular actions, we do need that quickness. For example, if I have to run, I want my muscles to be activated quickly to run, right? If I have to uh, speak something, I want my mouth to be quickly able to turn its tongue, lips, hair and there to be able to say the appropriate sound, 
right? Which is not needed when it comes to hormonal activities because they are balancing things over a period of time. So on the other hand, the hormones diffuse into the blood to be carried to nearly every part of the body, making their effect very slow, but also very long lasting, right? So for example, uh, managing, um, managing the uh, reproductive growth of organs or managing your emotions, these things are very slow and long lasting processes. You don't want to feel happy right just right now. You want to feel happy in a sustained, stable way, right? Your hormones should not be jumping up and down. So they usually follow a graph. So even for, um, I don't think we have it here, but for most hormones you'll see, there is a graph that exists which tells us how much of which hormone will be released in the body and how it will be processed. So the first hormone that, uh, the first gland, uh, endocrine gland that we'll be talking about is the pituitary gland. I'll just erase this. Also, uh, I just skipped over explaining that bit, but uh, the secretion happens in two zones, 24 hours and, uh, um, and over a period of time of 28 days, the lunar cycle, right? This is because the ones that are happening over 28 days may have a longer process. So they are preparing an egg to be ready for fertilization into a whole baby. That means it needs a lot of nutrition, it also needs a lot of bodily changes to be able to prepare it accordingly, right? Whereas a 24 hour cycle would be more to do with your circadian rhythm, which means you're sleeping and waking up, put simply. Right? So for example, in the morning I want to feel alert and awake. And by the night I, I feel drowsy and I feel like it's ready to rest. So all of that is a 24 hour cycle emotion. Sorry, 24 hour cycle, a cycle. And uh, things that are more long term, which require a certain processing, are maybe like, uh, like the female hormones which are associated with uh, the lunar cycle or the 28 menstrual cycle, 28 day menstrual cycle. So the first system is the pituitary gland. Can someone tell me where the pituitary gland is present? Yeah, so it's present in the brain near the hypothalamus. Um, in the last uh, chapter, how the brain works, do you remember reading how the hypothalamus, what are the basic needs of the hypothalamus that it meets? Yes? Anyone remembers what hypothalamus works with? What are the functions of hypothalamus? Yeah, that's the name. Um, the needs that it functions on is satiety, which means it helps you, the four F's I think it's called. Um, it helps you with your uh, food-based needs, your biological needs, and also your sexual needs, right? So these uh, hormone secretions also affect the function of uh, uh, hypothalamus, which is in turn, so this, uh, we call it the master's master gland actually. So this is how hypothalamus and pituitary sit on each other. Pituitary was actually hidden underneath the hypothalamus, I mean it is hidden, but we discovered it much later. So instead of taking hypothalamus's uh, master position away, we thought we'll call, we'll not take, call, not uh, call pituitary the master now, we'll call it the master's master gland. So because it was discovered later, actually it is pituitary that controls all the functions of hypothalamus, but it was hidden, so we could not discover it. So um, like you rightly said, it's uh, present at the base of the brain. Pituitary gland is a major endocrine gland which is also called as hyphosis. It is a pea-sized body attached to the base of the brain, measures about 1.2 to 1.5 centimeters or half an inch, which is just very, very tiny, right? Just like this much. And it is controlling your entire growth of your body. Isn't it so fascinating how a tiny little organ in your brain can have that much effect on your body? You'll see it controls almost secretion of all uh, necessary hormones and also at the same time managing your growth. Um, it is also called as the master gland as it plays a crucial role in the regulation of the endocrine gland, uh, in the regulation of other endocrine glands. So uh, like I was saying, it not only regulates its own function, it has a section controlling its own functions and then it has a section for controlling the activity of other glands. 
For example, you're feeling really anxious because, um, because you, were, you saw something and you thought it was a snake. You saw this wire and you thought it's a snake, you got really anxious. Now your body also needs to stop feeling anxious once it realizes that this is not a snake. So that is the job of the pituitary to send a control signal to make, a, make sure that the hormone doesn't affect you to a level that it is compromising your behavior or your biological functions. Right? So it is also overlooking the activity of other hormones or other endocrine glands. On itself, it controls the growth and development and the functioning of other endocrine glands. It has a stem-like uh, stem stalk known as infundibulum that connects the pituitary to the hypothalamus. These two glands, uh, there are two glands within the pituitary, the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary is also known as uh, adenopophysis and the posterior pituitary is known as neuropophysis. So what is anterior and posterior? Are we clear? We learned it in the last class. Anterior means the thing that is facing the front. So if you're if imagining a four-legged organism, anterior would be this part. If this is a four-legged organism, this is the face, this is the tail, this is anterior, this is posterior. So for human beings, since we are two-legged, this is anterior and this is posterior, right? So if you divide the pituitary, there's an anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary and they're functioning differently. The hormones released by both these glands are different and uh, have different functions. So the first we'll talk about the anterior pituitary. So the anterior pituitary, also known as adenopophysis, is divided again into two parts, pars interior and the pars intermedia. Anterior pituitary is made up of three types of cells. The first type of cell is known as chromophobes, which consists of 50% of the anterior pituitary, which shows affinity for any stains. That is why they are called as chromophobes. They are scared of colors. Phobes means scared, you know, phobia, and chromo means color. That is why they got the name chromophobes. The second type of cells are known as acidophils, which consist of 40% of the pituitary gland. They stain easily to the acidic dye. I'm just helping you remember the name to see how it, uh, what it implies about their uh, nature. The acidophils secrete the growth hormones uh, known as prolactin. The third type of cells known as basophils consist of 10% of the pituitary gland and secrete hormones such as thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, follicle stimulating hormone and mel uh, melanocyte, melanocyte uh, stimulating hormone. So any SH or stimulating hormone means they are, a, they are controlling the function of another, um, another endocrine gland. So for example, we have, I'll just list them down here. TSH, have you heard of this uh, in your, like have your parents or someone gotten a TSH test, T3, T4, TSH, right? So T3, T4 will tell you how much thyroid level is there in your body. TSH will tell you, is your body able to control the secretion? This is the component which is happening from pituitary, not from the thyroid. So when you do a full thyroid profile, if you go and see a report of someone, you'll see there are components which are released by thyroid and this component which is released by the pituitary to check if the secretion is in place. So it's called as the TSH or <coughs> ACTH, um, adrenos corticosecretion tropic hormone, sorry. This is checking the secretion of adrenal glands. What is the secretion of adrenal glands? Do we know? Adrenaline, what does it do? Adrenaline rush, you would have heard. It makes you feel anxious. It's a flight or flight response uh, hormone. So it is the component of your body which is responsible for your anxiety. So follicle stimulating hormone would be something that is secreting the uh, follicle in the female body. And then uh, the mel melanocyte, what is melanocyte, do you know? Have you heard of melatonin? What is melatonin? Just heard of it? Melatonin is a hormone released in the skin, which also decides the skin color. It's also responsible for the shade of your skin color. But it, is all, uh, it also is a, has a correlation with sunlight. 
right? So because of which it act it activates your circadian rhythm. It means it activates your sleep and night cycle. So even if you don't know the time, your body can gauge what time it is, right? You'll see animals are able of able to wake up at a fixed time, no matter how bright it is or how dull it is in the night, right? So that is maintained because of a circadian rhythm, uh, which is secreted by melatonin. But again, this also is because it's an important function in the body. It is also overlooked by the pituitary if its secretions are happening properly at the end of the skin. So this part is clear to everyone. There are three parts: the chromophobes, the color afraid. Uh, you can remember it as the color afraid part of the uh, from the dye, not from colors in general in the world. They are afraid of. Uh, they respond to a lot of color-based stains. And then the acetophils, which respond to acidic dyes. And then the third category, um, <coughs> uh, basophils, which, have, which are responsible for functioning of other hormones in the body. The pituitary gland is connected to hypothalamus, and they both work in a hypothalamic pituitary portal system. This portal allows hormones produced by the hypothalamus to be carried directly to the anterior pituitary without first entering the uh, circulatory system. Because they are so closely, like I said, it's almost like it's sitting on top of each other. They have a direct portal system, which is just between the two. This is a very unique part of the body. This doesn't exist anywhere else. Anywhere else, if you have to take something, you have to either use blood, nerves, or uh, respiratory tubes, right? This part has its own portal system because they don't need approval from any, anyone else. The hormones that are secreted by the hypothalamus are sent to interior pituitary through infundibulum. Hormones released by hypothalamus are called as releasing hormones. These releasing hormones of the hypothalamus are synthesized by uh, neurons located in different regions. So different parts of the body send its response to hypothalamus because it is maintaining the basic F, 4F functions of the body. And then it, uh, it relays that response to the pituitary. Um, these releasing hormones, sorry, the cell bodies of neurons in certain parts of the hypothalamus synthesize chemical data secreted by axon. In this way, the hypothalamus becomes that part of the nervous system, uh, both the part of a nervous system and the endocrine system. Because it also has neurons, it has proper neurons with axon, synapse and everything, but it also has a component which is secreting RH or the releasing hormone. So it is a dual organ. You will also see other dual organs like the pancreas. They are also helping in your digestion, but they are also secreting insulin. The neuroendocrine type of hypothalamus receives a neural impulses from other areas in the brain. In this way, the endocrine system is influenced by a wide range of neural signals that originate from internal or external events. The releasing of hormones from the hypothalamus influence the secretion of hormones by acidophils and basophils. In, in such a way, the hypothalamus uh, regulates the secretion of hormones of the pituitary gland. The releasing hormones secreted by the hypothalamus into the hypothalamic portal system are, I'm not going to write these down, but they are, you can just remember the names. They are largely growth related. Growth releasing hormone, growth inhibiting hormone, corticotropin increasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, thyrotropin releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, and prolactin inhibiting hormone. So inhibiting hormones are those which also, for example, you need to stimulate growth in the body. At a certain point, you also need to cut that growth down, right? Otherwise, people might outgrow their physical, um, uh, physical structure. For example, you've seen people like the great Khali. I, I don't know if he's called the great, but you know the person I'm talking about, right? He also, he has an excessive secretion. That means the inhibition was not cut off at the right time because of which his body outgrew the natural proportion expected. Right? So this is these things or dwarfism that happens, it also happens because of uh, imbalance in the uh, growth related hormones, either the secretion or the inhibition. So sometimes if the inhibition is too uh, quick or too fast or it is uh, caused by some allergies, then someone can have uh, decreased height or even mental growth because of this. Really, uh, the releasing hormones through the hypothalamus pituitary portal system reach the anterior pit, uh, pituitary gland, then the anterior pituitary gland releasing, uh, releases stimulating hormones. They, rele uh, they reach out to the target glands, which, require, which creates the uh, necessary hormones and uh, releases it in the bloodstream. Um, you can, I think, read the name of the hormones by yourself, because anyway, they will come when we go to the respective uh, organs. So we'll, oh, you already have it here, sorry, my bad. 
So the first is the adrenocorticotropic hormone or the ACTH. Um, this hormone is released by the intuitive pituitary gland to stimulate the release of hormones in the area of the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex then releases steroid hormones. They play an important role in regulation of the body stress and balance of the mineral levels. So adrenal cortex is here on top of your kidneys. So it's, it's like a triangular, the kidneys are like kind of like this. It's, it's like a cap on top of your kidneys, right? On both the kidneys, of course. Um, this gland obviously is uh, responsible for stress responses, which means fight or flight response. So fight or flight response is a biological response that is needed for you to fight off things like uh, physical danger, like if a lion attacks you or if someone's aggressively coming at you, but also anxieties that are non-physical in nature. For example, an exam is coming up, someone said something to you that is hurting you, you might, can, you can still feel anxious from non-physical things uh, using the flight or flight response. The, mel uh, the melanocytes uh, stimulating hormone or the MSH is a collective name for a group of peptide hormones produced by the skin, pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. It is produced as a response to the UV radiations and as a result, its production by the skin and pituitary is enhanced. They play a uh, key role in color pigmentation found in the skin, hair, and eyes. It is done by inducing specialized skin cells called as melanocytes to produce a, pig a pigment called as melanin. The structure of MSH molecule is similar to ACTH or MSH. Another darkening hormone such as estrogen and progesterone work together to control the pigmentation in a normal skin. It also helps to maintain the adrenal gland sensitive to ACTH. So, melanocyte, melanin, how much melanin is present in your skin by genetics can de will determine what is your skin color, right? But there's also pigmentation that happens on the skin. You, um, like if you see there's a difference in color around your eyes or different parts of your body or how your skin looks different on different parts of your body, there's more or less pigment in certain part of the body which is produced by an exposure to the UV light. That's why skin parts that are not exposed to... Uh... Hi, ma'am. <laughs> so you will be getting five long answer questions. You have to attempt any three. And this is for all psychology papers. Three no papers ke liye applicable hai. <coughs> five long answer questions. You will be three attempt karenge. And this is 20 marks for each. Right? So this makes it 60. Theke? Iske alawa, you have one short note. Just me aapko panch options diya jayenge. Aap in se bhi koi three attempt karenge. Pahla question, aapke paas pahle panch questions aayenge long answer. आपको उन पांचों में से कोई भी तीन अटेम्प्ट करना है ये 20 मार्क्स का हर एक क्वेश्चन है ठीक है उसके बाद आएगा आपका शॉर्ट नोट जिसके अंदर आपके पास पांच ऑप्शन होंगे उसमें से भी आपने कोई भी तीन अटेम्प्ट करना है और ये शॉर्ट नोट जो है वो 10 मार्क्स ईच है तो 60 प्लस दिस बिकम्स 30 90 का आपका ये पेपर है ठीक है बायो साइकोलॉजी कॉग्निटिव एंड इंट्रोडक्शन ये तीनों पेपर्स 90 मार्क्स के ये थ्योरेटिकल है बाकी का पोर्शन आपके आईए एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा से कवर होगा राइट so 150 बनाएगा ये पूरा का पूरा पेपर ठीक है यहाँ तक क्लियर है कोई क्वेश्चन तो नहीं है now there is no extra marks for extra question that you attempt कई बारी मैंने देखा है बच्चे चार चार शॉर्ट नोट अटेम्प्ट कर देते हैं कि एक लॉन्ग नहीं आता तो चलो थोड़ा एक्स्ट्रा कोई टीचर नंबर नहीं देता है इसके they make it a point extra questions are not marked and another thing अगर by any chance कोई भी सिलेबस से बाहर का है और आप श्योर हो कि सिलेबस if it is out of syllabus, right? Or jahan tak ne kitne pages? Again, it's up to you. Bare minimum three to three and a half sides is what you can look at. Bare minimum. Usse zada jitna aata hai, bhar sakta hai. Okay? Thank you. Ma'am, ma'am, internal assessment mein kya hoga? MCQ. Online, ma'am. Online. Twenty seven se shuru hai. Pragyan platform pe. Aapka wo online hi aapne attempt karna hai. I think two attempts mil rahe hai aapko. Best ki marks hai. So make sure you read the SLM. Sara ka sara jo aapka MCQ hai. If you thorough with the SLM, you will get full marks. I can guarantee you will get full marks if you have studied SLM. Right? SLM is your base. 
Back to endocrine system, please. Boys in the back. Can we discuss this afterwards? We only have five, ten minutes left. Okay. So the melanin is first at the basic level deciding. Guys. Can you please discuss this afterwards? It's first deciding your skin tone, then it is deciding how it will pigment, right, based on exposure to different, um, different uh, UV radiations. But also at the end, it is also deci deciding your circadian rhythm. That's why you see a common sleeping pill is melatonin, right? It, it, all, it, secretes, it, it secretes a certain hormone in your body which makes it feel like I'm asleep, right? So if you uh, secrete enough melatonin in the system, it will create an impression of the body that I need to sleep. That is why it is also used as a sleeping pill medication. Right? Um, the next is the luteinizing hormone. This is produced by gonadotropic uh, cells present in the anterior pituitary cell. In both males and females, it works upon the endocrine system in the gonads to produce androgens. What is androgens? What is androgens? essentially saying your uh, sperms or eggs, right? In females, an acute rise of LH triggers ovulation and development of corpus luteum. In the male, LH uh, is called as the interstitial inter uh, stimulating hormone or the ISH. It stimulates the production of testosterone. It acts synergically, um, synergistically with follicle stimulating hormone. So corpus luteum to put simply is that the human egg needs a layer of protection around it. So it has this almost, like if this is the size of the actual egg, it has a huge layer which is uh, of cells around it, which makes it ready for bearing a child. So if it fertilizes, it will need quickly a lot of nutrition to um, provide for the new child. So this cell surrounds itself with layers of uh, fat and food and recessory requirement for having a child. So this layer is called as the corpus luteum which surrounds the egg. So LH will release to secrete of secretion of the ovule, making the body ready for ovulation, uh, ready for fertilization and which will also means that it will have the whole corpus luteum around. That is why human body only secretes, um, female body only secretes one egg at a time because it can't afford to make all this nutrition for 50 eggs at a time. Right? So there will only be one egg but there may be multiple sperms because they don't need nutrition, it's provided by the female body. You want to say something? You want to ask me something? Follicle stimulating hormone. This hormone is synthesized and secreted by the gonadotropic cells of the anterior pituitary. It regulates the development, growth, pubertal, menstrua, pubertal maturation and reproductive processes in the body. So FSH and LH together work to make the reproductive system function properly. Again, they're also easily affected by your uh, other hormones. So for example, if you're not getting proper sleep, you will see your uh, hormonal levels may change. If you're not having proper uh, digestion of the body or the, uh, the thyroid is messed up, then they will also affect the FSH and LH in your body. It stimulates the secretion of estrogen in female and androgens in male, influencing the production of eggs and sperms. It stimulates the growth uh, of the cells within the ovaries, also called as the follicles. 
Each follicle contains an egg and they are released during ovulation. Um, I am not reading it further, essentially to say it is responsible for the whole process of carrying the generation forward. These are not necessary processes, right, for your own survival, but they are responsible for the survival of the species, right. So this, is, this section is devoted to survival of species, but in itself, do we need this? Do I need to have a child to survive? No, right. So it's not a survival process. These are, these are, this is the only section of your body which is not needed for you, but it is needed for the species at large. I mean, not necessarily. Someone else can also take care of it for you. Next is the growth hormones. Another name for growth is somatotropin hormones. This hormone fuels childhood growth and uh, helps in maintaining the tissue and organs throughout the life. It acts as production and repair of cells and tissues uh, by protein metabolism. It also stimulates fat metabolism, uh, indirectly inhibits glucose me metabolism and increases the blood glucose level. It promotes growth of bones and muscles. So like I said before, this, can, this is the part of your body which is responsible for uh, growth related abnormalities as well. So someone who has a condition because of which growth hormone could not be released might suffer from dwarfism or hypergrowth, which means they may outgrow their physical structure or just be sustained at a uh, height. Also could be to do with mental development as well. Hypersecretion of growth hormones in the years of life can lead to condition called as gigantism. So coming from the word giant, it is a condition where there's an abnormal growth resulting in enlarged hand, feet, jaws and so on. And hyposecretion, hypo always means less. Hyper is more, hypo is less, right? So less secretion can lead to stunted growth known as dwarfism. Um, just move on to the next section, just one second. Right. So now we are moving on to the posterior pituitary gland. Uh, so all of this was the function of the anterior pituitary. You see it's a very master gland kind of a uh, role that anterior uh, pituitary functions. So if you're not able to remember from exam point of view, just remember that anterior pituitary has all the functions of controlling other people, uh, not other people, other hormones, right? It is responsible for um, not so much, uh, not a lot for its own function except for growth. All other functions are actually functions of other endocrine glands which it is overlooking. The posterior pituitary gland is not, glandul uh, is not glandular as is the anterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary does not produce any hormones of its own, rather it stores and secretes two hormones made in the hypothalamus, the oxytocin or, and the ADH. These hormones are released by pit uh, pituitocytes. Can you stop the murmur in the back, girls in the back, can you please not do that? Um, these hormones are released by pituitary sites. Posterior pituitary gland is the largest collection of axonal projections from hypothalamus that end behind the anterior pituitary. These axons release peptide hormones called um, into the capillaries of the hypophyseal secretion. So just to say it is a storage system, right? It is a storage system for the hypothalamus. It doesn't produce hormones by its own nature. It is based in neurons, which means it is not endocrinal in nature, but it is storing endocrine uh, uh, hormones released by the uh, hypothalamus. So I'm not going to read further into it. You can just understand it's just basic biology of this. We will go into the oxytocin and how it affects us. The secretion of oxytocin is regulated by positive feedback mechanism. A positive feedback mechanism um, <clears throat> is that the output enhances the effect of the original stimulus. So I want, it's basically to say more of this is what a positive feedback mechanism looks like. Oxytocin is responsible for two actions. It stimulates the contraction of uterine muscles during the childbirth and causes milk, eject, uh, milk ejection from the breast of a nursing mother. So they are both, uh, they're both specific to female body, but they also have a slight contribution in the male body, but largely oxytocin is controlling the female system. The antidiuretic humor, uh, hormone or the ADH, also known as vasopressin, that is a com have you heard of vasopressin? You have heard of it in medication from someone in your family? Okay. 
It is a hormone produced by posterior pituitary gland. Its primary function is to regulate bot uh, the body's water balance by controlling the amount of water excreted by the kidneys in formation of the urine. It acts on the kidneys, uh, increasing the permeability of water, allowing them to reabsorb more water. This leads to decrease in the urine output. So it's a medication that people may take later on is to balance the vasopressin. That's why I said I, I think you might have heard of it because it basically is something that will in, um, influence the kidney function of the body. The hyposecretion of ADH leads to diabetic insipitus. In this condition, patients produce a large amount of urine. Symptoms of diabetic insipidus include excessive thirst, urination, dehydration, dry mouth and constipation. Right? It's a very serious condition, doesn't happen very easily. There could be other reasons for this, uh, this set of symptoms. Uh, but largely to say that, so how, um, how a normal uh, cell in the kidney looks like is this. It's called a nephron. So what it does is, there is certain water that is going through these channels. So when water is being released, we can reabsorb it. Making sure we are not, not wasting too much. We are not... Uh, making sure your body is not producing too much or too little of urine, which means it's detoxifying at the same time also not becoming dehydrated. It's over? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I thought it will ring the bell. So you can uh, review the rest of the chapter by yourself. Yeah? We're just overviewing quickly that the hormonal secretions will control a lot of our psychology, right? You will see all of these symptoms are associated with mental health, right? How you sleep is associated with your mental health. How you eat is associated with your mental health. How you, uh, how you respond to different uh, external stimulus is related to your mental health. So it will have a lot of component in psychology. You can also understand the implications indirectly. Okay, thank you. No, ma'am. Actually, the idea is 10 to